James Edward West was born in Washington, D.C. in 1876, with his father having passed away around the same time of his birth. By the time West was six, his mother had also died, and with no known relatives, he was placed in the Washington City Orphan Home. Life there was difficult and not very nurturing for a youngster. The children received little schooling and no cultural opportunities. After about a year, West was diagnosed with tuberculosis, and he spent two years in the hospital, much of the time painfully strapped flat on his back. Determining it could do nothing more for him, the hospital returned him to the orphanage, which refused to take him back at first. Because he could no longer perform any of the usual boys' chores, the eight-year-old West was made to sew with the girls. When West was 12, one of his mother's old friends, Mrs. Ellis Spear, took an interest in his care. He spent time with her family and she introduced him to the world of books. West became an avid reader and loved learning so much that he convinced the orphanage authorities to allow him the unheard of privilege of attending high school. He organized the other children to create a library at the orphanage as well as tutor one another. Paying his own way through a part-time job, West completed college, earning a bachelor's degree in 1900 and a master's of law degree in 1901 from the National Law School. He was admitted to the Washington Bar. President Theodore Roosevelt appointed him to the Board of Pension Appeals in the Department of the Interior in 1902. His experiences in the orphanage ingrained in him a deep interest in children's welfare. When a boy stole his car, Attorney West appeared in court to represent the young culprit. As a lawyer, West's focus concentrated on the welfare of children, and he worked with President Teddy Roosevelt to convene the Conference on Dependent Children in 1909, thereby creating a shift to foster care rather than institutionalized orphanages. West successfully lobbied Congress to establish a children's court in the District of Columbia, and he convinced President Roosevelt to call a conference on child care, which ultimately led to the creation of the Children's Bureau in the Department of Labor. In 1910, West was looking to open a private law office when he was approached by the fledgling BSA under the recommendation of Luther Gulick, president of the Playground Association of America. Now at the time, Edgar M. Robinson of the YMCA was running the BSA, but he didn't want to do that permanently. So after persuasion, West agreed to taking on the executive secretary position with the BSA, and his start date was January 1, 1911. Though it was only supposed to be a six-month period, West held this position for 32 years. The new BSA office on Fifth Avenue opened in January of 1911 with West at the helm, and the movement began to grow at a rapid pace. Sixty local councils were organized in January, and hundreds of scoutmasters were commissioned. By May, the office grew from six to 35 employees. West changed his title, and in November of 1911, he became the first chief scout executive. One of West's first tasks was the first edition of the official handbook for boys. In it, he was instrumental in expanding the third part of the scout oath to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. He also pushed to add three parts to the scout law, brave, clean, and reverent. In the early years of his career, West also had many issues within the BSA to deal with. Since the BSA had early and endearing ties with the YMCA, a firmly Protestant organization, the Roman Catholic Church initially forbade their boys to join. However, West successfully argued that scouting was non-sectarian and the Catholics accepted the BSA program in 1913. In addition, West also dealt with those who protested the inclusion of African Americans. West held that they should be included, but allowed that local communities could follow the same policies that they followed in the school systems. Thus, much of the American South, as well as many major northern communities, had segregated programs with colored troops until the late 1940s, with some councils not fully desegregating until 1974. Another issue that arose, particularly in the years before World War I, was the over-militarized themes in the BSA. Some thought that the BSA was too militaristic, especially as characterized by their military-style uniforms and discipline, while others felt that the BSA was unpatriotic in their stance against military training. It was an issue that West never quite was able to please everyone over. West also had to mediate conflict among other founders of the BSA. As early as 1910, Daniel Carter Beard and Ernest Thompson Seton had various arguments over who the founder of the scouting organization was. In addition, Seton, Beard, and even Boyce had different goals and ideals on how the program and scouting should develop. These ideals clashed often with West's administration. By 1916, Seton and Boyce officially stepped down from the BSA. 
West also had conflicts from outside of the BSA to mediate. Competition from another organization, the American Boy Scouts, caused West to seek a federal charter for the BSA. That charter was granted on June 15, 1916, but West continued to fiercely defend the use of the term scout and the right to market scouting merchandise. By 1930, West was said to be responsible for stopping up to 435 groups from unauthorized use of the term scouting, both as part of the organization's name as well as in the use of commercial products. Despite these challenges, West continued to expand the BSA's programs and influence. In 1912, he negotiated the purchase of Boys Life magazine, making it the official publication of the BSA. He also helped to keep it afloat during the Great Depression through a grant from the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Memorial. Despite initial misgivings about the Cub Scouting program, feeling that its creation would take attention away from the main programs, West was convinced by the popularity of the pilot programs in America, and Cub Scouting was eventually introduced and rapidly expanded after 1930 under West's direction. West finally retired from the BSA in 1943, passing his title on to Dr. Albert K. Fretwell, though he continued to serve on the World Scout Committee of the World Organization of the Scout Movement from 1947 on. Upon retirement, West was given the title of Chief Scout of the BSA. James Edward West passed away in May of 1948, though his legacy continues in the James E. West Award for individuals that donate generously to their local council.